stop touching it. <laughs> <laughs> So here's a couple, and uh, the first one is one that somebody else did, a good friend of mine, Montana poet, and a uh, guy I consider to be a mentor, Ed Leahy from Butte. Uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to do one of his, because I know it, and uh, I hope you like it. Ed called this his Ars Poetica, which is his poem on poetry. It's called Gimp O'Leary's Iron Works. And as Ed used to love to say before he did it, you can read that two ways. Gimp O'Leary's Iron Works or Gimp O'Leary's Iron Works. You hear a lot of lies about O'Leary, but he could seal a crack in steel no matter what the size. His arc welder would strike white fire and a bead of blue-black rod would slide along between cherry streaks, and acrid smoke would curl away to leave clean, married steel. Not too frail or buttered up, but straight and strong, hard as mill-forged rail. Of course, you might say, don't use that example as a metaphor for poetry. Welding is a matter of utility, and you'd be right. Still, I remember the look on his face when he'd lift his great helmet and sneak up on the finished job with his unprotected eyes. It was always between him and the piece of steel, a struggle of molecules and will. Often others would say to him, damn good job, or some such thing. And if it was, he'd grin and look again as if he thought the natural light would show a flaw or bridge that didn't fuse. Convinced, I guess, that in his struggle with the steel, he could seldom really win. He knew perfection could conceal the wound beneath the arc of his art. I liked him for that.